Worth the Trip features a wide variety of out-of-school activities and offers practical advice on how to organise and get the best out-of-school trips. Coming up, Anne Barnett and her class from Upkinson St Paul's Primary School in Tarpoli are on a religious education trip to the Manchester Jewish Museum. And Angela O'Reilly from St Austin's Catholic Primary School is taking her pupils to the Liverpool Philharmonic Hall. Anne Barnett's class is arriving at the Manchester Jewish Museum as part of its investigation into Judaism. The trip includes an introductory chat with Education Officer Jeremy Michelson. The Jewish Museum is really good in that it was a synagogue, so it isn't just a museum. And certainly the downstairs of the museum offers the children an opportunity to go into a building that feels like a place of worship, even though it isn't now, and, and for them to therefore feel that they have been to a synagogue. And then the upstairs of the museum offers them some more background information about the life of the Jewish community in Manchester. I think it's very important for the children to understand that other people have different beliefs and values and to develop a respect for them. What would be the first thing some of you would have to wear before you could even walk through the doors? Kippah, not a kippah. We don't wear fishes on our heads because they're cold, wet and smelly. But we do wear a kippah, that's K-I-P-P-A-H. And when I put it on, it becomes higher than I am. And that reminds me of somebody who is much greater than me. Who is greater than me? God, exactly. And that's why Jewish people wear a kippah, to remind ourselves of God. Has anybody got any questions about what you've been told so far that you'd like to just check up on? Why don't you um, pray to other gods? Well, because God said in the first of the Ten Commandments, there shall be no other gods than me. Why do you write on animal skin if you're not supposed to...? It's got to be a kosher animal. The cow is a kosher animal. We would eat the cow, you know, we would eat a cow. So it's quite OK to use a, an, an animal skin. Thank you very much indeed. Um, what we're going to do now is to split up. You can have some time to look at the stained glass windows. You're going to be able to look at the Torah scrolls in detail. You can go on the beamer and have a look at the real Torah scroll and then you can go upstairs and look at the exhibition. Now first of all before you actually start doing some work I want to ask you what your first impressions were when you came in. Um, I thought I didn't know it would have a uh, stairs on and, top. And a gallery? Yeah. Yeah. Stained glass windows would be a lot bigger than they are. I thought there'd only be one Torah. Do you read from the bottom and go upwards? No, you read from the top but from right to left. Do you remember how many laws there were? Uh, 600. Now we're going to look at the Jewish Sabbath. First of all, I've got a question for you. Hands up, who enjoys taking a holiday? Yes, I thought you'd all like that idea. Commandment number four says, Zohor et Yom HaShabbat Lekad Show. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So on the seventh day, which is Saturday, we call it Shabbat, the Sabbath, and we take a rest from making anything. What do you enjoy that has lots of electricity so you can't use it on Shabbat? TV or radio, computer, video, Walkman, stereo, Game Boy, PlayStation. It means that none of those things can be used on Shabbat. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Michelson, for all the information that you've given us and the interesting way you've put it over to all the children. We are a Church of England primary school, and so the core of our being is about the beliefs and values that are held in being a Christian. The various areas of learning that we have taken are about the Jewish belief in one God. We've talked about the importance of the Torah, how it's used and how it's handled, what it contains. Um, we've looked at the worship and the community, and we've looked at celebrations and festivals that children enjoyed very much. If you only have one glass of alcohol, you are not considered to be taking part in the mitzvah, 
It means festival in Jewish. I think the most interesting thing about Judaism is the festivals because they're all important and they're more, there are more in the Jewish faith than in the Christian faith. What I liked about the museum was you could go everywhere and there was no restrictions and you could try stuff on. I liked the upstairs because there was lots of things you could handle and there was more things about Jewish people who live in Manchester. There are many religious education trips available around the country. The Jewish museums in Camden and Finchley in London offer a wide range of tours covering all aspects of Jewish life and history. Together, the two museum sites tell the story of Jewish life in Britain through collections and exhibitions. The museums also offer educational programmes on the Holocaust. Beads World Education Service at Jarrow in Tyne and Weir offers a range of sessions exploring the extraordinary life of the Venerable Bede, including activities and exhibitions. Pupils can visit the site of the Anglo-Saxon Monastery of St Paul with its medieval monastic ruins. The Manjushri Mahayana Buddhist Centre in Cumbria offers pupils a talk, discussion and guided meditation with a monk or a nun. The tour includes time in the main priory building looking at Buddhist statues. The Sikh Museum in Leicester is an educational venue for schools and colleges interested in learning about the richness of the Sikh religion, language and history. A valuable collection of exhibits, artefacts and paintings illustrates the origins and development of Sikh culture. The Bolton Fate Trail offers pupils the opportunity to follow a route which includes 16 places of worship in and around the town centre. The trail covers historical information about the Muslim, Hindu and Christian communities in Bolton, outlining the key beliefs of each faith. The Sri Swaminara Mandir in London invites schools to experience Hinduism. The Mandir's Understanding Hinduism exhibition offers a comprehensive study of the Hindu religion. The Birmingham Central Mosque offers schools the chance to find out more about the workings of a mosque and the Islamic faith and gain an understanding of Islamic lifestyle and worship. A visit consists of an observation of prayer, a tour of the mosque building and a question and answer or discussion session. Litchfield Cathedral in Staffordshire offers pupils a chance to explore the cathedral and its treasures, including the library with its St Chad Gospels, the silver collection, glass and embroideries. The cathedral aims to relate school visits to the mission of the church. Angela O'Reilly and her pupils from St Austin's Primary School in Egbeth are taking a musical education excursion. Today we're going with a party of year two children to Liverpool Philharmonic Hall. We're going to have a workshop there and a tour of the hall itself. The Philharmonic Hall has been a major part of Liverpool's musical history since 1849. The hall hosts educational visits for Key Stage 1 and 2 school groups. The start of the day will be a workshop with two musicians yes. from the Philharmonic. Mm -hmm. And the two musicians are going to show their instruments to the children, explain how to play them, demonstrate how the different sounds are made, and then pay, play them pieces of music. Look, listen to mine first. Well, now, what's what was different about those two sounds when you played? That one's a bit louder and that one's a bit quieter. Feels on both. Now, um, can I ask you who in this room plays an instrument? We've got so many musicians here. What do you play? Violin, recorder, the guitar, the trumpet. Electric guitar. Electric guitar, that's fantastic. Yeah. Now, can you all stand up, please? And you are going to play the guitar. So we're taking you around to see some of the bits of the hall that you wouldn't normally get to see. So when do you think the hall was built? 
Absolutely. Well, very, very close. 1914. <gasps> very good. It was built, actually, it was opened in 1939, so it was just before the Second World War. They found the history of the hall um, quite fascinating, I think. Who has heard the story of the ship called the Titanic? <laughs> when the Titanic went to the Atlantic Sea, they, they weren't concentrating where they were looking. No. <coughs> and they hit an iceberg, and what happened to the ship? And it sank to the bottom of the sea. The people who were employed as the ship's band they stayed up late as the ship sank so that the passengers who, were, who knew they were going to die wouldn't be so scared. And one of those was a man called Mr. Clark from Liverpool. And he used to sometimes play with the Philharmonic. When we came back to school during the follow-up, we looked at our music chart in class and I asked the children to try and identify some of the instruments that they'd seen. You're going to point to one and name it and then tell us one that you saw and perhaps one that you liked, right? This was to reinforce our learning work on naming and playing of instruments that had taken place. At the Philharmonic Hall today, um, my favourite bit was when the cello was going squeaky. When we were playing these long instruments, when you got to go in the workshop. Can I just say, I enjoyed the Philharmonic. My favourite part was listening to the instruments. Here are some examples of other music trips available across the country. The Sage Gateshead Building offers pupils an introductory talk, a tour of the building and workshops with residents and visiting musicians. There are opportunities to get involved in percussion, steel pans, DJing, world music and music production. Resource packs are available for teachers. The National Railway Museum in York provides educational musical opportunities for visiting groups from preschool onwards. The Interactive Learning Centre was developed with school groups at key stages 1 to 3 in mind and supports music and many other subjects. At the Royal Centre in Nottingham, guides take pupils on a tour of the centre, including the stage, auditorium, foyers, backstage areas and dressing rooms. Pupils meet professional local artists, join in workshops and watch live performances. At the Symphony Hall in Birmingham, Pupils are introduced to the history of music from a wide variety of cultures using authentic instruments and are shown how music is composed. Pupils work with professional musicians on their own compositions and performances. The education programme at the Royal Albert Hall in London offers a series of workshops and opportunities for young people to create and take part in musical events. The hall also provides pre-concert talks and tours of the building. For more ideas on school visits, catch up with us next time on Worth the Trip.